distance, the maximum distance you can have from the kingpin to your tandems, how far they can be back. Every state has their own bridge law. Bridge law kind of came about because engineers needed some kind of, of uh, standard in order to build their bridges. And so what they decided is I need to know how much weight's going to be on my bridge and how how much how far apart that weight's going to be spread so I can calculate it. All right. So. Every state has their own bridge law. So how does that play in for us? Well, when we pick up a load, and let's say I'm uh, picking up a load here in Wisconsin, all right, most of the time my trailer tandems are going to be all the way to the rear of the trailer because that's the best position for them to load and unload a trailer. So now I have to, before I can drive on the road, I have to know that I'm legal. So. And if I'm going from, like, let's say, Wisconsin to California, I have to make sure that I'm going to be legal in every state that I travel through, all right? So what I need to do is I'm going to look at my trip plan of where I'm going to be going, and I'm going to pick the most restrictive state that I'm going to be traveling through, and I'm going to set my tandems to meet that most restrictive state, all right? So how do we do that? Well, we have this nice little sheet that PTI provides us. This is on your tablet, right in your truck, that you can pull this up, and it's got all the bridge laws, and it's kept up to date as bridge laws change. They don't change very often, but every once in a while, somebody gets a, um, an idea to do that. So I'm in Wisconsin right now. What's my bridge law in Wisconsin? So that's a lot of confusing mess, isn't it? See that keyword in there? It says or. So, Wisconsin has two options. Which one applies to me? 43 feet to the center of the rearmost axle or a midway, a point midway between tandem axles. What do we have on our trailer? Tandem axles. So, Wisconsin says 43 feet to the center of the midway between tandem axles. It's that pivot point where your springs are attached right there in the middle. That's the center between the axles. So for Wisconsin, they say 43 feet to the center midway between the tandem axles. So how do I know where 43 feet is? There's 41. So that's 41, so how do I know where 43 feet are? Take a tape measure and pull back two feet. Well, you could do that, or our trailer is a little bit easier because our trailers these ribs underneath are exactly a foot apart. So I can see if this is 41, and this is 42, this is 43. So according to the bridge law for Wisconsin, these tandems can be back to the center point between the tandems can be this far back and be legal. They can be closer to the kingpin and be legal. They just cannot be further back. So in Wisconsin, I could not drive with these tires all the way to the back. That would, that would be beyond my, my bridge law. Uh, Illinois, class one, class two, class three highways. Illinois likes to classify a bunch of highways, right? It's different weight levels for different highways. There's a class one highways interstates. Two might be state highways. They might have county highways, and that might be a class three. It all depends on their weights and what they're classified as. You'll see little signs on the side of the road what class it is. I might pull off the highway to go to a rest area or use a bathroom or get some fuel or something like that. So I'm going to look at the most restrictive. So going back to Illinois here, what did this all say? 45 feet six inches to the center of the rear axle. Applies to trailers greater than 48 feet. Is our trailer greater than 48 feet? Yes. How long is our trailer? 53. 53 feet. All right. On a class three uh, and other non-designated state highways, it's 42 feet six inches to the center of the rear axle. So, which is which is more restrictive? The 42 six. It's 42 six to the center of the rear axle. Where's the center of the rear axle? there in the middle of the hub. That's the center of the rear axle. So 
is 42 feet 6 inches to the center of the rear hub, more restrictive than 43 feet to the center between the... Yes. Why? Because if you have the center of the two axle points at 43 feet, your rearmost hub is beyond that. It's beyond that. So at this point, Illinois is my most restrictive, all right? So I'm going to set my tandems to begin with to my most restrictive bridge lock, all right? At that point, I'm going to go and scale my load. What does PTI say we got to, at what, at what weight do we got to go get our loads scaled? 35,000 pounds or greater. 35,000 pounds or greater. I would recommend for you guys being new, anything over 25,000 pounds first few loads like that go get it scaled just so you get used to that or you're gonna be you know you're gonna be going with your with your driver trainer they're gonna kind of show you that get used to your truck get used to how loads are loaded get used to what it's like you also kind of want to balance your loads too that'll that'll uh, help with your fuel economy so the shippers load the load the trailers um, a good shipper generally knows that they're putting a lot of heavy stuff on the front and they're putting a lot of heavy stuff on your rear tandems and kind of lighter stuff in the middle. Uh, for the most part, the ones that do it on a regular basis are pretty good at that, uh, filling that out. But you might have a load where you only got eight pallets. It's all up on the front, all right? Do I want to have all my weight up on the front and nothing on the back? No, because it's gonna, it's, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a smooth ride at first. You're gonna be bouncing like crazy down the road because you're gonna have that, that weight is gonna be flopping around. So you kind of want to balance it. When I say balance it, I don't mean 100 pounds exact balance. I'm talking a couple thousand pounds. tires are wearing more evenly, all that kind of stuff, all right? So, the next thing I'm gonna do is when I um, pick up my load, I'm gonna slide my tandems to that most restricted bridge law, in this case it's California, all right? And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and get my, um, my load scaled. How am I gonna know how much weight I got on my, that they loaded in my trailer? You said a 35,000 minimum. How am I going to know that it's that? Your bill of lading. Yeah. Your bill of lading is going to tell you what that load is and how much it weighs. All right. You're also going to get your load assignments ahead of time. And on that, it's going to have kind of a... Sometimes they just slap a generic 40,000 pounds in there, but a lot of times they'll, they'll have an idea if it's 32,000, 35. You do have to adjust that when you actually get the bill of lading. Um, it may not be exact, but it'll give you an idea of what you're dealing with, right? So now I go to the scale and we take it to a certified CAT scale. They're certified. They come with a, a, a warranty or a guarantee. If, if your scale ticket says one thing and you pull across a DOT scale and it says something else, you can show the officer the, your scale ticket and does that mean you won't get a ticket? No. No, it doesn't. But, but they'll pay it. They'll pay it if you do get a ticket. Cat will pay it as long as you haven't messed it up. Right. How could you mess it up? Well, if you go to your scale and then all of a sudden you decide to slide your tandems differently because it was easier to park into a space for the night or something like that, and then you didn't put your tandems back in the same spot, well, you could screw scale, it up. Or scaled on an empty you, tank you, you scale on an empty tank and then you put uh, 200 gallons of fuel in your truck and now added 1,200 pounds to your thing and now you're off, um, that's, that's on you. Now with the little app, you roll up, there's a little number on the thing. You tap in the number right into your app. Your com data card's already in your app. Boom, your weights pop up on your screen. You drive off, you slide your tandems, you do what you gotta do, ride back around, punch the number in again, re-ticket, on my way. All right, so if I get this scale ticket, am I legal? No. I'm over 80,000 pounds. You can't drive for over 80,000 pounds. If I go to a scale and I get this scale ticket, what do I have to do? 
Go back to the shipper and call your driver. Go right back to the shipper and call my Tom call in and tell them that hey, I can't take this load. They're gonna have to take something off of that load in order to be able to do it. What if I get this one? Am I legal? I am not legal. What do I gotta do? I need to move weight. Where do I gotta move weight? To your trailer. So my drive axles are have too much weight on it. I have to shift weight back to my trailer axle. How do I do that? All right. First of all, I gotta find out how much do I gotta shift. Two hundred seventy-five pounds. Two hundred seventy-five pounds. So if I slide it one pinhole, is that enough? If you do exactly 250, no. Ah. No. So I'm going to slide it two, two pinholes. That's 500 pounds. Do I have enough space to slide 500 pounds? Yeah. All right. Which way do I got to slide the box? Which way does the box have to move? All right. So if I want to shift weight to the rear, the box has to slide backwards, which means my tandems are actually moving forward. Correct. But we don't actually move the tandems, we move the box. Correct. Because we lock the tandems and the wheels don't roll, the box slides. Correct. All right? So that's why I say it that way. If I'm shifting weight back, my box is sliding back. Correct. All right? Will I still meet bridge law if I slide my box back? Yeah, you will actually be a better one. Yes, because my tandems will be closer to the pin, or my king pin, so I will need bridge lock. So, my goal here will be then to slide my tandems two pinholes back.